Alright, uh, hey guys, this is uh, King Yu here, and we are about to start a quick tutorial video uh, slash introduction video on SMUU and how you can get started and get yourself up and running to uh, into this tier. Uh, we are currently in our beta phase. Now what that means is that the tier is not yet officially established. We have a couple of uh, things that we're going to explain in terms of what beta is, why we do it, and when the tier will actually be official and what the differences are between that. Uh, so first and foremost, you know, thanks for uh, coming, thanks for listening, and thanks for joining me. Uh, at the end of this uh, video, uh, once I'm done the live stream, there will be uh, a copy of this video recorded on the actual channel of Smoking Underused. What I will do at that time is uh, edit the video, maybe make it a little bit more enjoyable in terms of entertainment value. You can have some music in the background. I'll probably put some music in the background there as well. And uh, we'll figure some stuff out together. <laughs> this is my first time doing this in forever. Uh, so uh, bear with me if it seems a little bit bare bones. I promise the more I do this, the more interesting it'll become. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, I'd just like to say uh, a huge thank you uh, for participating and uh, welcome to SMUU. So, uh, SMUU is uh, Sun and Moon UU Gen 7. The reason why uh, we are very excited is because for the last few years we've been playing Gen 6, otherwise known as XY slash Oras UU. Now this new transition uh, does a lot of stuff. It gives us new Pokemon, it gives us new abilities, it gives us new mechanics in Z moves, which I'll explain shortly. Now what I'm going to do is quickly just show you uh, what the underused tier is, how you can get involved, and and pretty much just taking it from there one step at a time. So pretty much the first thing you want to do is go to smogan.com and check out uh, the site here. So uh, everyone that comes in will be able to see um, this basic information in terms of similar to play, especially competitive discussion. What you're going to do is go to SMUU, which will take you to the main sub forum. You're going to see a little bit, uh, some stuff a little bit different than me. Uh, I'm a moderator, so I have some you know moderator stuff going on here. That doesn't really matter. But pretty much, uh, this is going to be your central hub of all things UU related. Uh, my favorite thread, and the one that I personally invested in, is the underused form guide, resource thread, and announcements. Here we list everything from A to Z, how to participate in UU, and how to achieve success in our tier. First and foremost, you will see that we have specific leaders and uh, moderators of this tier. I myself am a mod. Uh, next, we have the UU Cancel, which will be announced soon. Uh, our key contributors, which you can see over here, a great uh, group of people which I really trust and really value uh, in terms of the work they contribute to this tier. And we have uh, some quick rules, which is, you know, be, be respectful, don't be an idiot, don't make individual Pokemon threads, which so far, I have to say, everyone's been doing fantastically. And then a couple more policy information on how to succeed on Pokemon Showdown and how to get authority if you want to get more uh, responsibility. And last but not least, there is an introduction and posting guide for those of you that want to kind of learn what the hell to say, because you know, sometimes it's hard to really um, integrate yourself in UU, and that's what this is for. This is an entire A to Z uh, introduction posting guide written by our very own mass to help you with that. Uh, the second part of the um, of the resource thread is of course the resources themselves and this is a list of all projects that are available. You can see that some of them um, are not currently updated yet because we haven't received all the have to actually update this right here. Um, but yeah this is a list of all tournaments, projects, resources that can help you uh, get involved. I highly recommend that you give this a look. I'm sure you'll find at least one project that you want to uh, get involved in. The cool things, uh, thing about projects is that they can really, really help you get better and learn more about the tier. Uh, in my opinion, the best players are the ones that can see the sort of spiderweb information, how everything sort of connects in the tier. Because once you're able to do that, uh, you can play on the highest of competitive competitive levels. And hopefully, uh, by watching this series and getting familiar with how we do things, you'll be able to see exactly how it is that we succeed. Oh, thanks, uh, thanks Tempest Turkey. Uh, so first and foremost, let's start by talking about what SMUU is. Uh, SMUU is uh, the tier just under OU, which means that we get all of their mods uh, that are under a particular usage. In OU, things are decided by how they're used and how often they're used. If the majority of players, for example, are using um, uh, Tapu Coco, for example, uh, then we're going to see that mod in 
OU, and we're not going to have access to it in UU, regardless of whether or not it's overpowered. And that is how the OU tiering system works. We receive everything they don't use, hence why it's called underused. And the way we determine that is based on all of the mines and all of their usage, if a mod is used less than 3.41% of the time uh, in all the battles, it gets uh, sent to the tier under it, which is how we get stuff like Scizor and, uh, you know, Latias enter our tier now because the OU beta stats showed that uh, their usage was under that 3.41% line. Now, this obviously changes over time. Uh, every month, uh, at least for the next little while, and every segment of the OU stage, which will eventually become uh, seasonal, I believe, every three months, uh, they will receive new uh, usage stats updates, which will determine what the new mons are or what the current mons are that are above that 3.41 percentage line. And that's where kind of, uh, you know, we come in. We, we are constantly, uh, you know, communicating with UU and uh, OU in terms of what we get. Um, what we get from that tier and that changes every shift every shift you'll lose a couple things you'll gain a couple things uh very rarely will there be a shift will you lose or gain nothing i believe in gen 6 the shortest amount of uh, the, the smallest amount of number was like one pokemon that we gained um one thing that i have to say uh is that the entirety of uu uh has a bit of a tradition in terms of what we want the power level of mods to be. We don't want mods that are too powerful coming in UU and diluting the amount of viable mods that we can use. For example, we had Charizard Y uh, enter the tier uh, for UU Alpha, which was a made-up thing that I you know, just wanted to be for fun, which is now apparently turning official. So just goes to show you that if you can make a half-decent idea and make it work, eventually SS will pick up on it and they'll take it and they'll make it work for you. Now, one thing um, I, I would like to mention is that, you know, the, the versatility and the amount of mines you can use in UU has always been the highlight, in my opinion, of what underused is. The most important part of what underused is is definitely, uh, you know, just based on how we um, uh, have just so many different type of Pokemon, which is really phenomenal. You have so many things that you can do. Um, if we take a look at a couple of my teams, for example, for beta, which I find back and find, sorry, I'm pretty uh, useless at navigating this stuff. Uh, you can see right away that you can build a very, you know, diverse, I have to a couple here because <laughs> they're outdated, but you can uh, build very, very diverse teams and have very, very diverse results. And I think that's the pride and joy of UU, that we have the most versatility, the most amount of, uh, you know, uh, healthy amount of versatility in our tier. So. What I'm going to do right now is kind of take you through the, uh, the process of how you can get involved in the room, in the showdown room, and how you can get involved everywhere else uh, in terms of uh, the smoke and showdown. So recently, uh, some of you may have noticed that we've taken a much stronger position in terms of uh, smoke and behavior and PS behavior and their contributions, their mutual contributions, uh, in order to get any sort of authority now in the you need to be contributing on smoking. And we actually heavily, heavily encourage that. If you want to participate in a project, you can always ask me. I'm always available to help you out and to uh, answer your questions. If I'm AFK, uh, I'm AFK. I never ignore anyone if I'm at the computer. Uh, it sometimes just happens that, you know, you'll send a message to me when I'm like sleeping and uh, I'll get back to it the next day, which lo and behold, you're offline because people don't stay on the site for eight hours like I do. So pretty much, um, if you have questions, you can always ask me. If you have questions, you can always ask the contributors that I uh, showed you over here in the compendium. These guys are a great, great, great group of people. Some of the best battlers and contributors in our tier uh, as of right now, and they'll definitely help you. Uh, some of them are even actually council members. I believe, uh, yeah, Crystal over there, council member, is also part of the community contributor squad. So you can actually see that everything that we do here has a reason, it makes sense. We always want to explain ourselves and uh, make sure that what we're doing in terms of tiering is, you know, looking good. If you have any questions right now, uh, I see some people mentioning some stuff about uh, whatever whatever you need to do. You can always uh, ask right now. 
And yeah, uh, Sakuri's not wrong. The TLDR of this stream so far is you can ask me questions. I'm here to help you. Uh, and, and, and frankly, so is everyone else. The, we have a great team here that is committed to uh, a good environment. So uh, let's just jump right into it. Enough of the stupid exposition. Sorry if I'm boring you, but like I said, this is the first video. It'll be more fun once I can add some music in here. Let's do a little bit of team building. So right away, you can notice that this tier is different. It has versatility. It has some megas. It has good options for receive moves. Uh, it has new toys in the form of Scizor, uh, one of my favorite Pokemon. Uh, that I've been using lately. Uh, I've been using this fantastic set in the form of Iron Plate, which just takes out so much stuff after a Swords Dance boost. And it partners very well with stuff like, you know, Keldeo uh, and uh, Latias, which are two wonderful additions. These three mods right here can form such a fantastic backbone for so many of your teams. And you'll notice that as time goes on, you'll just be able to include more diverse options and, and more interesting uh, scenarios. For example, one of my favorite cores right now is the Raikou Scissor Core. Um, if you notice, Keldeo, Ladias, Raikou Scissor, these are all new things that have joined us. But that doesn't mean the old stuff is bad either. Um, I'm a big fan of a lot of our older toys, especially Crook. I think Crookedile is amazing this generation. Its typing has never been better. Uh, its move pool has never been better, and its ability to uh, taunt, stealth rock, have offensive choice band sets, all of these things have uh, allowed it to continue as, so far, an interesting presence in the beta metagame. Um, so now I'm just gonna try to find something that can help me uh, control hazards a little bit. Uh, I guess we can stick to Crobat, keep things simple. Just, and you'll see, this is a pretty generic looking team. There's nothing too uh, risque about this team and what it can do. Pretty much right now, we're just you know looking to build a generic team and say, oh, you know, I can do that too. Uh, I didn't realize it was that easy. Um, so in this slot, you can actually do a couple things. You can do U-turn, uh, U-turn. You can do knockoff. You can do bug bite, superpower. Uh, I know a lot of different people like doing a lot of different things. I'm a huge U-turn fan because the point of this set is to kind of be like an offensive pivot that has access to priority and then you can clean up late game once you just pull off a random sword stance. Uh, you'd be surprised by how much it works. Uh, the spread of this, well that's a terrible spread, is going to be very very easy. It's going to be max attack uh, because you want to get as much power as possible. Now I've been running a set for Scizor that hits on about uh, 190 speed. Uh, the purpose of this is to get the one up on some of our older toys like Conk. Uh, you know, the last thing you want to do is lose to something like that. And that actually gives you a little bit of bulk to work with as well. There also are some alternative sets that I've been playing with. I believe one of them has been, what is it? A 220 mark, I believe it is. So I've been uh, experimenting a little bit with that uh, just to kind of get the one up on some of those slower mines like Rosa Rod that are still around, still have access to HP fire, but for whatever reason I've seen some bulky variants. But normally I will be sticking to the uh, 96 speed uh, benchmark. I might actually add a little bit of points for that in the future now that you assholes all know my sense. Uh, Keldeo, wonderful, wonderful mod. Uh, an incredible, incredible mod in this tier. Probably could be looking at a suspect test later on in terms of whether or not it's broken. As of this point, it does seem to be a top tier mod. It does some really, really cool stuff. Uh, one of my favorite sets is the Substitute uh, Lefty set, which is a very, very basic set. You can run it a couple of ways. Um, and I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of the more generic methods of running it. Uh, so, of course, you have your basic set, which is just max, max. Uh, you want to put the four in uh, special defense because, surprisingly, download is still a thing. It still exists, especially now that Porygon Z is gone. You're going to want to do some stuff with Porygon 2, which actually finds a surprisingly powerful and bulky uh, conversion set that I actually used on one of my teams before. Uh, one of the uh, really, really interesting components of, uh, of this uh, mod is that it can set up on so many things. It has a wonderful speed tier at 108, which probably isn't as good as it was before uh, in previous generations, especially in you know, Gen 5, but it's still a very, very, very reasonable range, uh, especially for a substitute user. Uh, alternatively, you can do a couple things. You can actually put sub on Raikou instead and let Keldeo run a uh, choice set in terms of Scarf respects, but I kind of want this to be a U-turn core. I'm a huge, huge fan of Volturn. I think that 
It works incredibly, incredibly, incredibly well on so many archetypes. It's so easy to just get a good U-turn off that changes the entire foundation of the game. It's almost like freebie points that kind of help you determine what you should do in any given time. Um, so for the purpose of this uh, video, I'm going to keep it as Keldeo uh, with the substitute set, and we're just going to keep the generic set. Now, other things you can do is, of course, you can focus a little bit more on bulk. Uh, there are, all are a couple directions you can take with this. Uh, one of the more popular ones I've seen has been something like that, where you kind of focus on specific benchmarks so that you can mentally know what you know something like base 105 will do, uh, or what base uh, 108 uh, uh, special attack will do. There are some options when you can uh, play that you can play with these numbers and get some results, which can actually save you some uh, headaches in the future. Some of the benefits of this, of course, is that stuff like a bullet punch from Scissor will not take down the sub, whereas. Uh, you know, this set would always break us up if it was just regular. But for the purposes of this, we're not going to be too interested in, in bulk or trying to mess with people's heads. We're kind of just going to stick to the basics. Now, speaking of sticking to the basics, uh, Latias is probably one of the best uh, defoggers in the tier right now. However, I kind of want to give it uh, a little bit of a wide berth uh, in terms of the defog set. I kind of want Crobat to experiment with that. Um, actually, no, we can... We can change that up a little bit. We can actually have Crobat taunt for fun. Sure, why not? Let's keep it a standard Soul Dew set and see what we can do. Uh, frankly, I'm of the opinion that the best sets are the ones, for Latias at least, are the ones that keep it simple. Um, Hidden Power Fire is a fantastic move that you can use on this without a doubt. I prefer Rooster Lord. I'm not sure why. I'm just doing Rooster so basic max max set. Now, uh, again, this is a very, very basic team. Uh, it's going to look basic, act basic. Uh, you're, you're not going to be using this for any sense of, um, you know, unpredictability. You're using this because it's a simple staple that you can wrap your head around. Uh, Raikou, again, has multiple options. I kind of want to stick with power as opposed to speed. I'm of the opinion that having a 108, 110, 115, uh, 131 should be sufficient for speed. Uh, that the worst case scenario is having a couple scarf bonds like scarf hydrogen that can uh, surprise you. Um, but frankly, I'm not too concerned with them. Scissor can always take a Draco uh, and then roost off the damage. Uh, it's, it's capable of doing that with no, with no problems. Um, if we do stick to a sort of you know uh, sky plate set instead of a choice set, Crobat's the same thing. It can come in. It can at least, well, at least on a uh, 1v1 situation, you can take a Draco and boost off right away, and all of a sudden the Hydrogon is become the So we'll stick to a choice set for now and see what we can do with it. So, choice specs, uh, pretty basic. You have Thunderbolts, you have it's one that you Shadow Ball. You always, you're always going to run Hidden Power of some sort. Um, I guess for the purpose of this team, we can run Hidden Power Ice. Uh, grass is also a fantastic Hidden Power for right here. And of course, basic set, nothing special here. Uh, I'm a big fan of that extra point defense. Now, Crook is one of the most interesting <clears throat> uh, moments in the game right now, at least in terms of uh, versatility. One of the, um, I guess you can say, one of the most interesting sets that Crook can run is a lure for powerful water types or bulky water types like Sleek and uh, Kelpia, that kind of stuff. Skull on this thing. Even, even Tentacle loves clicking Skull on this thing. Everything loves clicking Skull on Crocodile. They always expect to just kind of like keel over, which is why I love running this set. This is one of my favorite sets right now. It's a Pasha Berry set um, that can really, really, uh, you know, get the one up on a lot of people. Uh, it does run bulk. Uh, the entire premise is to run a crazy amount of bulk. I do believe it's something like 224 speed. I'll have to double check. and attack. Not a very powerful set. It's not supposed to be powerful. The stuff that's supposed to do is, uh, you know, consider a situation where, uh, you know, you're facing a Swampert. Swamperts love clicking Stealth Rock against Crocodile Turbo. They just absolutely love it. And guess what? Even if he doesn't, you're still going to get the Taunt and the Stealth Rock off, which is going to give you a lot of opportunities to do a lot of stuff. So you know what? Perhaps Hidden Power Grass would be better here to kind of give us the opportunity to revenge and kill stuff like Swampert if that Scenario does rear its ugly head. Um, one of my 
favorite items on Crowbat is Sharp Beak because it doesn't have a beak. It's not fun. I think it's fun. I'm that kind of guy. So, pretty basic set here. We're gonna go for a double uh, taunt. I love that. People never expect having two taunt mons. Another option is, of course, going for Toxic. Uh, you could also go for Defog here, which leaves the door open for Ladias to kind of run a Life Orb set with Hidden Power Fire. All of these are, are decent options. You can totally do that. In fact, I do recommend that. The best teams are the ones where people take them and they, they have like five versions of the same team that each do something a little bit different. And then guess what? Each time you play, that person that's expecting the same result, they'll be like, what the fuck? How come, you know, I remember this Crobat being... Uh, taunt, how the fuck did it get, and how, you know, how is it a choice band now? How, how is it running a choice band set? I, I never thought that I was uh, going to expect that based on my knowledge. And you'll notice that once you start to get to know different tournament players, once you start to get to know the community, you'll start to know how people operate and do things. You'll start to figure out that they like to do things a certain way. And based on that, you'll kind of, um, you'll pick up on that, and you'll start to adjust your teams based on the person you anticipate you're playing. Kind of hard to do on ladder. Ladder kind of uh, benefits from just, you know, conventional uh, methods of team building mixed in with, you know, very uh, left field gimmick options that can really, really surprise people. I personally find that while team building is very, very important and good, strong team building works in tournament battles, um, you know, if you're not running an interesting set that can confound or lure or you know, make you feel comfortable with a scenario that you know you have the advantage in, you're not going to get very far. You're not going to get past, for example, round three or four being open. Once people start figuring out how to really, really up their game, you're not going to be in a position to get past above average. And we all want to be above average. So that's what the point of these videos are. To kind of help you get past the beginning stages and eventually become a uh, powerhouse in the tier. So, now that um, Alakazam's back, we can't really afford to run the 144 benchmark. This was a benchmark that I used to run for Um uh, you know, But now that we have base 120s in the tier, um, it, it used to have some base 121s, but they got we got rid of them. Now that we have only base 120s, you definitely want to run at least, at least 374 speed, which is 176 with a positive uh, speed nature. The remainder of this can, of course, um, you know, go into HP, which can then subsidize a bit of your bulk. Um, you'll notice that, of course, the defense, special defense stats of Crobat are identical. If you're very, very, very scared, you can do something like, you know, 248 and put four, H uh, four EVs in special defense if you're scared of the download boost. Personally, um, I don't think that Crobat has much to fear uh, from the likes of Porygon 2, especially with this set, I believe this set can 2 KO, even if it does go to Electrotite. And if it doesn't, well, what we can do is Brave Bird turn 1, Taunt turn 2, and then let Scissor finish it off. Uh, but again, that's such a that's such a random scenario that I, I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, the, my bigger concern is, of course, for stuff like Keldeo, which is weak uh, to stuff like Porygon 2 after conversion. That, that, that's my larger concern at this time. So here we have a reasonable team, uh, has a bit of an ice type weakness, but we don't really have any ice sharders in the tier right now. So not a huge, huge deal. Let's see how it fares. And uh, if you guys have any questions, now would probably be a good time to ask. I'm happy to check out some stuff and help you out. And like I said, uh, at the end of this video, I will be putting a ton of tunes in here. Very big on tunes. I love tunes. So we'll put some tunes. Alright, so uh, right away you can see that we have a pretty uh, interesting team that we're facing right over here. Um, I actually built a team very similar to this that combined uh, Kurum with uh, Alola Nine Tails. Interesting combination. Kind of leaves the door open for a lot of uh, mutual weaknesses, but if you're a smart team, you can get around it. One of the things that I don't like here is that. He has a Venusaur. There, there are better options. We have a Moogus right now. We shouldn't be using Venusaur whatsoever. Um, but, you know, we'll see what this guy does. Maybe he has, like, a, a Sun team hidden within, uh, you know, uh, a Hail team. We'll see. We'll figure it out together. We'll start off pretty basic. We'll start off with Scissor. I don't really see anything that can really, really hurt this thing. Um, so I might just go for a Swords Dance right away and uh, bank on the fact that this guy is pretty new and he might not know what he's doing. 
and I could just win right now. So I'm just gonna go for a, actually I'll go for another Swords Dance right over here. Um, yeah, he's he's really just letting me set up here. I, I really have no idea why he do that. And um, so right away I'm going to go for a uh, Roost. You know, just to heal back some of that damage. Uh, he might go for another EQ. I guess not. Thunderous comes in there. Uh, again, I'm not anticipating that this thing can KO me. The uh, extra HP ADs really, really help, and I think Scissor can KO, and it does KO. Uh, like I said, Iron Plate uh, Scissor is absolutely unreal. And just like that, <laughs> I, you know, personally I think the team building was kind of questionable here. Uh, the choices were kind of questionable, but that's okay. We'll do another one, and I think after that I'll kind of let you guys go. I'll, I'll definitely join you again. Sometime later this week, I'll be bringing a ton of guests, and you'll actually notice that we'll have a ton of guests joining us uh, on a cast-by-cast -cast basis. Uh, next time, I believe we'll have the pleasure of having our good friend, Brody, uh, who will join us. And uh, this guy is a great battler, uh, has been around the forefront of UU for the last couple of years. Uh, he was on a winning team for UUPL3, I uh, did pretty well in uh, you know some of the Opens. And uh, frankly, I think this guy has a lot of potential to do really, really well. And so far in beta, he's been a pretty interesting powerhouse, so he'll be joining us. And we might have a couple of other names join us as well. Uh, at some point, I would love to have the TLs join us uh, to get their innermost thoughts, because of course, uh, even though I am part of the staff, they, they are the true leaders of this tier. And they'll be the ones that'll be able to give the most interesting levels of information. So, um, this team that we're facing here, right now, Interesting combination of mons. I love the fact that he's using Doublade, uh, another very underrated threat right now. Doublades are doing so well in terms of all the new things that have come in. Uh, Shadow Sneak hits on almost all of the new toys from Scissor to Keldia to Latias to Raikou. So, you know, we really, really have to be careful. We kind of need to keep Crocodile around, you know, lest we lose to this thing after a couple of boosts. So, uh, I'm anticipating the Spore here. I kind of just want to do like a bunch of damage to this Growling. So, even if he does get the Spore, you know, it's not gonna kill me. Um, I'm gonna go for one uh, bullet punch here, or it doesn't really matter what I go for. I'm just trying to waste the, a turn here. Uh, it doesn't really matter what he goes for. I'm not anticipating that he has, uh, you know, rock, whatever it is. So right away we see uh, Azumarill, and if this guy is the belly drum, well, he's wasting a turn. I really don't know why he did that. Uh, so we see that it's a choice band uh, and, and not it's, it's not actually, uh, it doesn't have a Z move, it's not a Z belly drum, it's normally a Z. So we're okay in terms of that end. Um, a safe move here would just be go for a Psy Shock. I don't really want to predict too much in terms of doubles, but I also know that Crook and uh, Doublade are a huge possibility. So I'm just going to hard switch into Keldeo. And this guy just goes for another uh, of his waterfalls. So at this point, I have to, I'm have i thinking, okay, well, you know, this guy is kind of playing a, a weird game. Uh, I don't want this to take more damage than it has to, so I'm going to hard switch again into Latias, otherwise we lose the point of running sub altogether. And right away we see that he hard switches, so he was, he was actually scared of getting sculpted by that thing. And that kind of gives you an idea of his mindset. You can tell that this guy is the kind of person that in the beginning of the game, he's not probably going to want to risk a Scald Burn for no reason. Uh, and that kind of goes into the King Yu Central Database. So, Zohan Solo, I'll remember you, buddy. And next time we play, uh, I'll remember that you do not like taking Scald Burns, um, you know, on turn three or turn four, whatever it was. Uh, we'll see if that information actually helps out, but that's an example of, you know, what you should do um, whenever you face someone and whenever you face a name that you recognize, you should always remember what they do and how they play and kind of store this into a statistical database for yourself where you can eventually make the right choices when you face them next time. So I'm going to go for another Psy Shock here. Uh, I was actually going to, I was predicting Doublade. I'm surprised it didn't go in. Uh, I was also kind of expecting Crook, uh, but I thought that, um, I, I definitely thought that he, I didn't think he was going to think that I was going to Draco. I uh, definitely didn't see the point to that. So I'm just going to go for another Psy Shock here. Now I'm definitely anticipating the Crook or the Doublade, and there it is. So right away I can see that this thing um, uh, is probably an offensive set. Um, or Sorry, when I, 
No, that's not what I mean. It's definitely probably not a scarf set. It's very unlikely to see Intimidate with Scarf. There's really no point. The entire purpose of Scarf is to get a Moxie boost. So I am fairly confident that a Draco will either take this thing down if it's offensive or put it down to, you know, extreme, extreme KO ranges. He doesn't even want to risk it. He goes straight into Double Blade. Uh, maybe he was anticipating. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but that's not really relevant to us. We're just going to hard switch into Crook. It doesn't really matter if he Sacred Swords. It doesn't really matter if he anticipates because this is the kind of Crook that can actually take uh, two of those hits. So we're definitely going to get either a knockoff EQ or rocks out no matter what. And and really depends on whether or not he swords dance, whether or not we're actually going to be doing that move. So you can see, you can see that uh, I like to anticipate. Uh, I'm not really sure why he thought that was the right choice, but hard to shoot Mr. Raptor. Um, if it's banded, it probably KOs me, but that gives away a lot of information. And I can do a lot of damage with that if he continues to play quite like that. Uh, as of right now, if this Staraptor goes down, nothing is stopping Raikou from just Shadow Balling to victory. Absolutely nothing. So, you know what? I'm just going to click on Stealth Rock and see what happens. So he goes for a U-turn. Uh, just based on the damage, I can tell it's Scarf, which is, you know, probably one of the best, best... Uh, uh, sets for Staraptor right now. Uh, there are actually a couple of people that are kind of worried about that set. Uh, now I'm going to hard switch into Krika and to Keldeo. I was anticipating the Stealth Rock. Um, I wanted the opportunity to get a sub off. So I'm going to go for a sub right here. He's going to go to the Brelum to just, you know, get rid of it. And I kind of anticipated that, uh, which is why I went for the sub. He goes straight into Latias. Now, you can probably tell what this thing is going to start doing. It's going to start clicking Psyshock. So the first thing I'm going to do is get, try to get a, or, or a Psychic, sure. I'll get a free Scald off. The reason why it's free is, of course, well, we have this up. We're not going to get hurt. We can get a Scald off. Now is where we make our choice. Do we think that we are going to, um, uh, do we think that he's going to click Psychic again? Uh, do we think that he's going to click Draco? Do we think he's gonna, he has in Power Fire? Do we, do we think that he has any of these moves? Well, at a certain point, you kind of have to say, well, fuck it. I don't know what this set is. He's never revealed it. I don't know what he has. Now I have to get away from predicting and just pick the most optimal choice. And in this case, picking the most optimal choice would definitely be Scissor. Uh, it's asleep. It can't really do much right now. Uh, we don't really know what its overall asset is to this team. We don't even know what's going to uh, wake up this turn. But we'll go for a um, we'll go for a U-turn all the same. If this Latias reveals that it has uh, Hidden Power Fire, that actually just helps us in the long run. So we've burned another turn of sleep. Uh, Scissor is still not awake. At this point, we kind of want to save it in case the second turn of sleep gives us a nice bullet punch for the win. So we'll go back into Crocodile to weaken this Crocodile so that the next thing that comes out can really deal with it. So then we see he uses Inferno Overdrive. Uh, not really sure why. <laughs> that was a really, really stupid move. Um, it didn't help him whatsoever. I don't really care. I was going to let this thing die anyways. <coughs> so because we can anticipate the likelihood of Ladias coming in again, we'll just go for a Scald right away this time instead of, uh, you know, forcing a situation where we have to waste more HP because of the substitute. Instead, we want to gain some HP back and kind of mitigate the damage of Stealth Rock. And these little choices are the difference between, um, you know, just kind of playing willy nilly and using all the little and big data to make just the most optimal choice. And eventually, that's what you'll find is the big difference in this game. It's the difference between optimal and non-optimal choices. So we're going to go into Scissor War again. Uh, we're anticipating another Psychic, uh, because that's how this guy likes to play. Uh, so he goes for a Draco. That's fine by me. That's totally, totally fine. I really don't care about that. Um, because that kind of gives me the freedom to, you know, revenge kill. And then again, you know, make my own choices in terms of what I want to take out after that. So uh, I'm a little bit worried about the Shadow Ball because if Crook comes in, it can definitely start to pressure the remainder of my team. And we also have to remember that there is a Staraptor out there that can do some huge, huge damage if I'm not careful. So at this point, I don't have the luxury of risking Raikou any more than I am right now. In fact, uh, risking Scizor in that scenario could have been very detrimental and actually might end up losing the game. And sometimes you only realize that after the fact, which, you know, it happens. So we'll go for a Shadow Ball right away. 
which takes out Azumarill. I'm anticipating that he goes into Crook or Staraptor. Either of those can handle it pretty well. And if it goes into Staraptor, well, you know, that's not the worst case to, uh, scenario for us. Uh, at this point, we're probably going to have to risk Latias. There's not much it can do, uh, and, you know, in terms of a couple 50-50s and this and that. So we'll, we'll let it go down and we'll call it a day in terms of, uh, in terms of Latias. So now we have a couple options. Uh, if Raihu comes in, it'll be at 75. If Crobat comes in, it'll be at 75. Um, either is not entirely ideal. I don't think anything can take a double edge from this thing. Um, but we'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. So yeah, Strap Scarf Strapter is just a huge, huge, huge threat. Um, very, very easy to use and quote unquote abuse. Uh, not not a term I throw around lightly in terms of you know abusing, but um, Strapter is very, very good at taking control of what it's been given. And frankly, what it's been given is pretty remarkable. So he decides to go to double A to absorb uh, that hit. I'm just gonna go for a taunt right away. I don't believe there is a huge amount of risk of iron uh, of an iron head and a shadow claw chaos. I could be wrong. In fact, I think I'm wrong. But uh, I need to go for the taunt here because if he okay, well that's fine. That's fine with me too. I'm totally okay with that. I'll explain the second one. So we're just going to go for a Brave Bird. Um, you can pretty much anticipate that he's going to uh, use Knock Off, which is, again, that's, that's pretty much okay. We're not too, too concerned with that. And down it goes. So our remainder options are limited, of course. Um, we could sub here. That's really the only choice we have. He's probably going to go for EQ. And uh, I guess for him, he thinks that he's won the game. Uh, which probably isn't too, too far off. An interesting note that if we actually had Scarf Raikou, we would have won the game. So, you know, something to, perhaps in the team building process, I should have thought of that. And I should have thought of Scarf's Thraptor. Well, that's what happens when you don't plan. So this thing does double edge again. Uh, we'll probably anticipate that if this doesn't KO, then double edge definitely. So kind of a close game, uh, not really, it got maybe, uh, could have been a lot closer, could have been a lot closer if I had made a couple of smarter choices, maybe. But uh, I think that more or less kind of gives you an idea of the kind of things that uh, work in UU. -U. I'll try doing one more, one more game with uh, a team that I'm more comfortable with. Hopefully I can get you some results instead of, you know, constantly fucking up. But we can definitely uh, check this out and uh, do one more together, and then we'll call it. Just want to say thanks for uh, joining me, guys. I'm not sure if you've been here from the beginning, but if you're just joining us now, uh, we'll definitely do more of these videos. We'll have a lot of people joining us. Very excited for uh, this year's Smokecast. I'm sure we'll do, or Smokecast rather, we'll do a much better job than we did last time. And now we have a lot more technology and a lot more support than we did last time in order to get this stuff off the ground. So we'll be sure to uh, get something done for sure. While we're looking for a game, uh, we can talk a little bit more about the other new toys. Uh, oh, actually, uh, I guess we can talk about that while I'm showing you uh, this game. So initially, right away, we don't see too many mons that can uh, that Crook can take advantage of. This is a very you know non-Crook friendly team, which is fine. Uh, we don't necessarily need everything to be in our advantage, but I am very worried about the Primarina. Uh, so right away, what I'm going to do is. Uh, Go to Latias and uh, go for a go for a basic Draco. He's probably gonna anticipate the Psy Shock. Uh, you know, I'll probably just do my own thing. Uh, he goes into Bi Sharp right away, probably anticipating the Psy Shock. Uh, not a bad decision on his part uh, at all, in my opinion. Um, of course, I'm now worried that you know this thing is gonna set up rocks or you know, take do a knockoff or something like that. So I'm just gonna card switch to Breloom. Not a very defensive mod, but I can definitely take one knockoff from this thing. Um, he's probably going to be going straight into uh, Amoongus. I definitely do not want that to deal with that whatsoever. This would be a pretty good uh, time for me to uh, get uh, rocks out, which is what I'll do. 
let's see here. Uh, I'm anticipating either a spore, a good drain, whatever. Um, not a very ideal situation for me to be in. I don't really know if Taunt is the right choice because he can just hard switch again, anticipating Taunt. Um, but we'll go for it. We'll see what happens. So there's the Giga. Uh, a good choice by him. I'm gonna go for Stealth Rock again. Or rather, for the first time. And uh, just to make sure that well, just to make sure that it does what it does. Because we need a rocks. Rocks that always helps, you know, a situation where you need passive damage. Um, capitalizing on double switches when rocks are out are also a wonderful way of using rocks to your advantage. Pretty much any method of forcing switches, forcing momentum shifts, will allow rocks to benefit your team. But this is pretty well known stuff as it is. So Mew comes in, uh, not really sure what this Mew set is, it could be a defog set. I think I'm faster, so I'm just going to go for a knockoff. He goes for that, so I'm going to go for a Stealth Rock again. Um, I guess it's a new thing. Why not just run Cobra Berry for my- like, what? Why item less? I'll go for a Taunt this time. He goes for the defog for some reason. Again, uh, th these are not plays that you should be doing. You should be anticipating. Uh, these things, right? Like, he, he should have hard switched or done something to put himself in a better position to deal with that choice. Um, at this point, Crook isn't doing much. Uh, there are many things that can take out Mew, there's many things that can take out Bisharp, there's many things that can take out Amoongus. I'm just going to go for another EQ, try to lower uh, the strength of Amoongus so that Chandelure can come in and do some damage. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go for an easy flamethrower, nothing too crazy. So uh, either he predicts that, or he wants to mitigate the damage that that'll do. And this time I'm going to switch it over to Shadow Ball. Um, he might be anticipating and might go straight to Primarina. If he does, that's actually good for me. I don't really mind that at all. So the rare Earthquake on the uh, Infirmate actually quite surprised me. I was anticipating that. But see, now we're at a point where if if Scissor can just come in and get what Swords Dance on anything, really, uh, that puts us in a situation where we can win. So he goes for an Agility, we go for a Flamethrower, we're not sure why he agility there, not the right choice of moves at all. I'm going to let this thing go down, and he just lets this thing go down. Again, not the most ideal move in that situation. Uh, this would be a good time to kind of mess with his head and see if Porygon 2 can get a free special defense, a special attack boost. Um, he has a buy sharp, he has an Amoongus, so we have about a 50% chance right now. I also think that that's a defensive Mew, so we can actually get a boost right now. Okay, so it's not. Uh, but that does invite Scizor, so he's going to go for a Defog, I'm going to go for a Swords Dance. Um, I know some of these run Flamethrower. If it does, I'm very, very surprised. And that's pretty much the game for me. Uh, unfortunate crit for him, uh, but again, if he did not run Flamethrower, there's absolutely nothing he could have done. Um, I probably should have scouted for Flamethrower just to see if it was an option that he would do it. That probably would have been the smartest move, but you know, for the purposes of this, I just wanted to do a quick battle to show you guys. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a couple battles in EU. I believe I took two out of three. The first one was kind of a joke, but you know, whatever. It happens. And uh, we'll definitely do some more of these battles later, later on. Uh, we'll definitely be doing a lot more in terms of team building. We'll definitely be doing a lot more in terms of talking about uh, Smogan, the site, and the kind of stuff that it can offer you. So once again, uh, guys, I'd like to say thank you very, very much for joining us. Uh, we will talk soon. Thanks again.